Okay, as we get just that much closer to actually creating some data, uh, the, one of the last things we really need to look at is essentially setting the conditions for collecting data. Um, let me, uh, first of all, let's just look at the, uh, the help page. We're going to reference this. Uh, keep in mind, uh, just a r reminder that uh, when we are digitizing in VR, uh, we are just, uh, the, the, the very base is the coordinate and XYZ position. Uh, we can string together multiple XYZ positions and uh, connect those with a line. Those lines can have attributes. Uh, we're going to look at those. It could be a single point, either displayed as a symbol or a piece of text or a point in a cloud, usually LiDAR. So it all comes down to the X, Y, Z positions and the attributes <coughs> that go along with that uh, position. Uh, but there's also going to be some conditions that we're setting for the data collection. So let's just, uh, as far as the help page goes, let's just kind of look at the insert line, I-N-S-L-I-N. And uh, there are certain things that are uh, that we looked at before, uh, attributes that are going to be set. Um, so the couple things we need to pay attention to, um, and let's go ahead and let's see here. The easiest way to do this is probably to go ahead and start VR1 and open a VR file. And again, I could do that through the uh, dialog boxes or the, the toolbars, but and we'll just grab this file. And if I start INSLIN and hit 7 for enter, 7 for parameters, um, these are some of the conditions that we are going to look at. So when we look at uh, the key ends, these are the conditions that are being set. We'll look at those more carefully in just a minute. Uh, but then up here in the uh, the key dialog, remember this also gets started for every command. Uh, some of the attributes, so for lines, things like layers, width, graphic pointer, and then uh, various other non-display parameters. Um, points on the line. That's how many points have been digitized. So these are all things that when we start and insert command are uh, things that we're going to look at. So let's go back to the, uh, the help for a minute. So let's end this. Go back to the help and see that all of those things, uh, one of the ways to set them, and this is, this is setting them in real time. So if I'm digitizing a line and I type LAY equals and a number, it will set the layer to that number. That's how key ends work. But also, when um, I am, uh, before I even, you know, I, I start the line, uh, before I digitize anything, I can go ahead and condition things. The reason some of these things are important is that these are the kinds of things that are going to set be set in however you interact with the software. If you interact with function keys, all of these things will be set in function keys. The function key editor, edit function key, so let's go ahead and start that up. You can see in the function key editor, uh, the, uh, the function key has a name it has an integer that you can start that um, you can start that function key just by typing that number. Uh, this really goes way back to some of the uh, um, the initial user interfaces when all you had was a uh, a button pad. Um, but anyway, so a function key 
will do things like it this the name of this one is road hard surface it has a number it is going to start the command insert line any of these insert functions could be started and then it's going to set certain attributes for the line the layer uh, the mode you know is it going to be a line or a splined line uh, the graphic pointer uh, certain non-graphic attributes uh, some are real numbers some are text some are floating point numbers uh, check the documentation um, you know, is it a construction line in other words it's, it's not intended to be part of the map and we can turn construction lines on and off we don't actually uh, internally use those very often uh, the width of the line and this is just a graphical attribute um, that's stored with the line to make the line look wider. Uh, it does not actually add anything to the line. The line is just X, Y, Z coordinates. And then a feature code. Uh, uh, in a feature code, this is actually a string of text. And you can see if I hover over this, it'll tell me, you know, it's uh, 48 characters. Then we have these things called local arguments, global arguments, on end, on quit. We're not going to get into those today. Um, just be aware that when we start a function key, all of the attributes of the line are set, and the conditions for digitizing can be set down here. Here's another really important thing, and it's uh, it has to do with function overlaying. We have uh, okay, we edited that. Do we want to say that uh, change viewers to continue? Yes, because I did not change it and I did not want to. All right, so I have got a function key that has the name INSLIN. It is going to call the internal function INSLIN. The important thing here is function keys get processed before functions. So by creating this overloaded function key, I'm taking the, um, the function, INSLIN, and preloading it with certain parameters. So if I just type INSLIN, I don't want it to do the last thing that I did. I, I don't want it to do something um, uh, unpredictable. I want it to always do certain attributes and certain conditions for digitizing. Right here is a an example of key ends and why it is useful to know that they exist and how to use them. So this is a function key. It has this name. It uh, does not have a number associated with it. Uh, it starts a function, it has these attributes, and it conditions the act of digitizing with these, uh, these actions. Key ins, attributes, these are all conditions for, um, for digitizing. So let's go ahead and get out of this and go back to the help page for just a minute. So, in uh, the same way, anytime I'm digitizing, I can change attributes in real time. If I change this before I end the function, the attributes will change. So, as an example, the I'm going to start um, insert line, and I'm going to leave this help up here. So I'm going to go out into, you know, maybe I'm digitizing, and I'm going to type LAY equals 1, and you can see that up in the key in dialog, the layer changed, and when I end it, uh, it has that attribute. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. Get rid of that. So key ends can affect the attributes. 
the other thing that they can affect are the conditions for digitizing. So let's uh, let's see. I think what I want to do here is let's just do an example. I'm going to do a zoom window. I'm going to get in a little bit closer. Um, I am going to turn on the line points oh, I'm turning on the the uh, line graphics um, line points on okay so what this is going to show me is every point that was digitized to create that line. Now, if I digitize a line now, and we'll just go ahead and um, leave the conditions the way they were, digitize three points, and you think, all right, why did I get all of those points on a line? Well, let's go to look at some of the line conditions. Well, one of them is max segment length. And this means that as you are digitizing, do not ever allow a line segment to be longer than that distance. So what it's going to do is it's going to add points to the line as we are digitizing where is it going to get the elevations for those lines? Now, I don't have a, I don't have an active surface. Uh, I don't have a 3D digitizer. I'm just digitizing with a mouse, so the elevation is always going to be constant. So no surface, no 3D digitizer, no point cloud. It's always just going to be the same, um, the same elevation unless I change it manually. But as it's digitizing these points, it can create the elevation based on interpolate, use the Z source, which if it is the surface, the Z, regardless of where your um, mouse is, will come from that Z source, the surface, or it can use the thing called high-low search. All of these things are, are just, they're in the help and have to be studied, but what I the point here is that there are conditions for digitizing. They affect the actual line that is being um, digitized. So for example, if I digitize a node point on another line in real time, should it put a point on that line or should it just geograph geographically position the point exactly uh, concurrent with that line. So um, these are all conditions for digitizing. And the reason that we're looking at those is because we can change those in real time. Because there is a key in called max seg I can change the conditions from the command line. So if I say, remember it was set to 10, max seg equals 100. Now when I digitize a line, those points are 100 feet apart. If I say, max seg equals zero. In other words, do not put any segments. It is just going to give me the raw points. So not only am I changing those in real time, but I can also, in my function key, all right, in my function key, I can set it up to predetermine the max segment. So 
why would I want to predetermine it? Well, sometimes when I'm digitizing, I only want the raw points. I know I only want the raw points, and I never want it to wake up remembering the last segment length. If I don't precondition, it's going to remember the last state. So, let's uh, remember this one. This is just the overload INSLIN. Let's go back and look at that INSLIN. So there are certain things that are set. Max seg is not one of them. So it's going to remember the last state. So let's go ahead and do that again. And no segment length, because the last state that I used was no max seg. So that's the idea of attributes and conditions. Um, I just put in four lines. Another example here. I'm going to go ahead and undo the last four things that I did. So those, uh, those lines are all gone. It is critical that for every entity type that might be digitized, either a string of coordinates in a line or uh, a single coordinate as a symbol, the, uh, the attributes and conditions have to be set. So it doesn't matter if, uh, if your primary interface is going to be function keys or macros or some sort of a toolbar or a touch screen. All of the attributes and conditions either need to be preset or they need to be, um, uh, you need to understand that they're going to be remembered the next time you start that thing. Uh, Overloaded functions are a great way to set the first state of each uh, of each function. Uh, the primary, the absolute primary basics would be INSLIN, insert line, INSFLY, insert fly, INSSYM, insert symbol. INSTEX, insert text. It's nice to have those primary functions preset and overloaded so that when you start something, it always starts in the same, uh, in the same condition. The other thing in the help that is uh, really going to be useful is learning the button assignments for the, uh, for the button dialog. So uh, when I start INSLIN, and every one of these buttons is going to have a secondary button dialog, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But um, So when I start this up, button number one is going to digitize the first point, um, and you know then keep digitizing points after that. Uh, and as I'm digitizing, I can close, I can back up, I can end the line. Uh, I can attach it to another line. All of these things, you know, these are help functions, uh, help pages, and you pretty much just need to uh, um, go through and, and learn all of the buttons. And we'll we'll look at that. We'll look at some of the, the uses, uh, some of the conditions. Uh, let's just real quick, uh, let, let's start up INSSYM one of the other main things. So this one is just going to start, uh, you know, a 76 for for internally is uh, DTM spot grid. It uses a particular graphic pointer. Um, it um, has a the, the source function key where it's coming from, the radius, rotation, um, it, certain key ends. So let's go back and look at the uh, Uh, 
insert symbol help. Uh, you know, very common set things like layer, graphic pointer, um, rotation, uh, radius. Uh, those things are really, really commonly <coughs> set. But let's, for example, and if, if we look over here, you can see RAD radius equals. This is going to be set in map inches. Right now it is point uh, that's being rounded, so it's set to 0.025 or 2.5 feet at 1 inch equals 100 feet. If I say uh, radius equals 1, it is going to get a lot bigger. So now it's going to go to a 100 foot radius. If I hit button number 7, it's going to bring up the things that I could possibly set as far as attributes. <coughs> And some of the uh, the key, the uh, conditions. So we'll take a second there. there go. Um, so key ins, yeah, L A Y equals very similar to, to all of them. L A Y equals one. You see that the the layer changes. Um, if we do go back to <coughs> the uh, attribute dialog, graphic pointer. This one, if we click on, it will bring up all of the symbols and we can change that from there or we can key it in G graphic pointer grp equals 48 so key ins and conditions for digitizing we look real quickly at the function key editor just to, to see an example of that we can also precondition things with macros edit macro so these are just random strings of um, of characters that uh, are assigned certain uh, certain functions. So if I'm going to put in a hedge, it is going to call the um, Oh, I see. This this starts two uh, this actually starts two different functions. One of them and this is this is really poor practice. One of them starts a function key uh, that has to do with bedding and one of them starts a function key that has a number going back to a legacy system. Um, this is one of the things that internally uh, I, I need to do is I need to decouple the numbers because they don't mean anything to anybody except somebody who worked on the legacy system. So this is actually starting two function keys, but it's a good example. This function key has a name, this function key has a name and a number, and we use the number for whatever reason. Um, here's a function key or a macro that starts a Python command. So there's a Python command that hacks both ends of a line by a certain distance. So it calls the Python. It takes an argument. So if I want to hack off five feet from both ends of a line, I start H-A-C-B-O-T. Um, for hack both space a number ID the line and it will hack off both ends of the line. Uh, the other let's see, let's go back over here and because we have a macro called SL and uh, this was actually this is poorly done. Uh, at one time there was a Python program that did uh, did a, a couple of different things. But it really came down to mostly we just want to set the segment length. So let's go here and edit this function key because we know that we can set a segment length simply with max seg equals and then a number. So I'm going to change that function key 
or I'm sorry, that macro. Don't get those mixed up. Uh, I'm going to change that macro. And this is kind of interesting because all, right, all of these actually could be changed because they were just doing the same thing. Um, they do also set another key in. We can look at that one in a second. But SL is a shortcut macro to set the max seg length. So let's, uh, okay, we'll save that function key or that macro. I'm just going to constantly do that. If I do an insert line and I digitize a line, it's just going to give me two points. If I say SL space 5, and now I go look at the conditions, see how it changed the maximum segment length to 5. Let's digitize a line, button 4. If I say SL space 10, digitize a line. Uh, here's another example. There is, let's go back here, and there's a um, a condition for digitizing what are some of the ways to end a line. Well, when I hit button number four, it can end a line, which means that the last point actually digitized is the last point, and wherever the cursor is, it just ends the line with that previous point. I can digitize and end the line, meaning when I hit button number four, it collects the cursor position as the point, a point on the line, and ends the line. I can end a line after two points, meaning button one, button one, line done or I can make a circle by digitizing three points. So after three points, it creates a circle, it ends the line, and you're ready to go on. So let's look at our macros and see how these are useful. I can have those three different end modes, and they all have integers associated with them. And this is end line, digitize an end, two point line, three-point circle and mode three. Uh, but let's go ahead and cancel and let's say EM2. So now if I go down to my message area, see how the end mode changed to two-point line all the way down at the bottom of the bottom message area. So now when I digitize two points gives me a line. Oops, let's undo because I didn't want all those segments. So let's go segment length 0 and redo the line. So a combination of function keys, macros, key ends to set attributes and conditions for digitizing. Uh, let's go ahead and clean that up. Undo those last four things. Those are the, the very basic core tenets of digitizing in uh, VR1 and VR2. It works the same in VR1, VR2. VR2 is just a uh, stereo 3D digitizer data collection. For the most part, it is a matter of becoming familiar with at least the core insert commands, what some of their key ends are, what some of their attributes are, how those can be changed, if there are uh, existing function keys, you know, if the uh, internally we have function keys, there is a thing called a function key starter and it brings up all of the function keys that have been created and you can start those by double clicking them 
So let's say I'm going to do a util AC unit. Double click that. This is why I keep this on another screen. Get rid of that. But I have a layer AC unit, the graphic for an AC unit, all of the proper um, uh, attributes are set, the conditions for digitizing are set, and all I have to do is start pointing and clicking, and when I'm done, and that, and we're off to the races. So that is the uh, some of the essentials for actually creating coordinates as lines, streaming fly lines, symbols, text, or uh, I would say lidar, but usually that's going to come in from uh, you know from externally, and the, the, for the most part, you're just going to be uh, editing those.